the scary season is upon us, and an absolute staple of the Halloween season has been The Simpsons' Treehouse of Horror. So today, we're looking at the most evil characters, the spookiest storylines, and the most gruesome moments. So grab some trick-or-treat candy, turn off your lights, and binge some Treehouse of Horror. I said I'm going to kill you. You, Homer Simpson! Oh yeah? With what? The first Simpsons Halloween special occurred way back in Season 2, but it quickly became a tradition among the creators and fans. While we've covered the main Simpsons cast in one of our larger Good to Evil episodes, the Treehouse of Horror episodes stand alone as being universes of their own. That's good! All with their own twists and turns. That's bad. But with these new characteristics, how do our beloved Springfield residents stack up on the morality scale? I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is Treehouse of Horror, Good to Evil. Now, we'll be discussing and ranking the most frequent key players of the Halloween episodes, so we had to put some thought into how to tackle the Treehouse episodes, mainly because characters who recur are oftentimes presented with completely different personalities. For instance, a character can appear as a hero, only to appear in a later Treehouse episode as a villain. As usual, we'll be starting with the most pure and noble character and working our way down. These characters are the good. Bart Simpson is not usually seen as pure-hearted. It's not that he's horrible, but he's a kid that makes a ton of bad calls and tends to be impulsive. But in the Treehouse of Horror, he really shows the best of his character. It doesn't mean he's not impulsive or never makes any poor choices, but he is more considerate and heroic in these stories. He saves his classmates from a gremlin attacking the bus, he dives into a portal to save his father, and saves Lisa from a brain-sucking Mr. Burns. While he can be swayed to the dark side, he's typically teaming up with Lisa to stop some plot, such as escaping their murderous father or running from a cannibalistic school staff. Moving on, Lisa stayed pretty true to her character, even during the chaos of the Halloween specials. Especially in the earlier seasons, she was quick to catch on to any abnormal phenomenon, being the first to call out Mr. Burns being a vampire and trying to protect her family when she thought they were going to be eaten by aliens. She teamed with her brother, the dead only being raised so he can try bring her beloved cat back and try to help stop the murders done by Willie. She also took the role of the Katniss parody, leading everyone put up to kill one another to take out Mr. Burns. Even though that last one didn't work out, it was done with good intentions. Well, could be worse. She was blamed by her imaginary friend for the murder she committed, saying she came from Lisa's mind, so everything she did was technically Lisa's fault. I'm gonna kill everyone you love. We don't really see it that way, since Lisa fought against her. But it's a warped thing to think about. Up next is our bronze medal of good. Marge is usually higher on these lists, but she's had some questionable roles. While we rank her higher, as she is the one that is set up to warn parents about the violent programming to follow, she was also portrayed as a witch that devoured children, and as the head vampire rather than Mr. Burns. More often than not, she's the voice of reason and a realm of madness. She does have her more surprising moments, such as when she blew away a bunch of mutants rather than allow them to be chummy. Now the littlest Simpson. Maggie is usually turned into a variety of creatures during these stories, from being part alien, to being a witch, to being a demon more than a couple of times. No one leaves a lie. But we cut Maggie some slack, despite her destructive tendencies, because we know she's just a baby, mimicking what she's seen on TV, or acting out based on something she can't really vocalize. But we also have to admit that a Maggie on the loose with unpredictable abilities is terrifying. Finally, we get to Homer Simpson. Homer is a beloved character, but the Halloween stories give him a chance to be more careless without any real consequences. In many of the stories, he's seen as a liability. I don't forgive it. Damn you! There are times such as after his wife is revealed as a witch that he accuses Lisa of witchcraft, not wanting to be mocked for throwing a rock through his own window. He screws up the timeline numerous times with a toaster, sells his soul for a donut, who wouldn't, and turns into an axe-wielding maniac just from lack of beer and TV. But we have to give him some credit, since he does try to correct the timeline and fights for Maggie as his child when he learns about Kang. He was the one to take out Burns when Lisa revealed he was a vampire, and fought against the zombies rising up after Bart and Lisa's spell went haywire. Professor Frank is brought up more often in the Treehouse segments than he is in the canon episodes. His intellect is often sought in times of panic and unusual circumstances. One story in particular focuses on him bringing his father back to life, 
wanting the man that inspired him to pursue science to walk among the living again. He tried warning Homer against using the teleporter too carelessly, and was one of the ones consulted when Homer was lost in the void behind the bookshelf. With that said, we've arrived at the neutral territory. These characters fall in the gray area. Moving on to a fan favorite. Groundskeeper Willie often tries to be the hero, even though that never seems to go in his favor. He tried saving the children from being eaten by the school staff, tried saving the family from Homer's axe-wielding rampage, and showed up to try and get Homer back on his own timeline. I can get you home, but you have to do exactly as I- ah! However, all those encounters ended up with him being taken out by an axe being plunged into his back in a twisted ongoing gag. He falls lower due to one of the most memorable Treehouse of Horror moments ever, with him being a Freddy Krueger parody pretty much killing children as they slept. So, even though he does try to help most other times, this definitely weighs him down quite a bit. Plus, when he does try to help, he usually ends up with an axe in his back, but it's the thought that counts. Hey diddly ho there, neighborino! Ned Flanders was a tricky one to place. On the one hand, he's usually the same helpful and lovable Ned we're used to seeing. On the other hand, he's also capable of murder if need be, and is even shown to be the devil in one particular episode where he accepts Homer's plea to sell his soul for a donut. But even as the devil, he was still a reasonable and friendly guy, accepting going through with the trial when Lisa requested it. When Homer was exposed as already giving his soul to Marge, he still punished Homer in a way that would be torture for the man, turning his head into a giant donut. In Ned's other roles, he does lose points for ending up as a zombie be, a flesh-hungry mutant, and as a witch-hunting radical. The times where Ned is still the nice guy, things don't work out well. When Ned was given the ability to see people's deaths, it just made Ned desperate to protect and ultimately cause more damage. When he tried helping the gremlin that was attacking Bart's bus, it wound up with him decapitated. We drop him a bit, mainly due to the whole devil thing. But we place Ned in the gray because though he's done some questionable things, the poor guy ends up dead every time he tries to be the good guy. Chief Wiggum falls lower than he typically would. He manages to be just as negligent in these episodes as he does normally. But in one segment, he took it to the realm of murder. In what was meant to be a jab at Sherlock Holmes, he kills a bunch of innocent people just to be able to solve a case before anyone else can. He was also given the role as a sheriff in a small town, accusing women of witchcraft, having Marge shoved off a cliff, and led the entire police force to wait outside for Homer after the man's head was turned into a donut. If you're innocent, you will fall to an honorable Christian death. Normally, Mo has a hard time reeling in his anger and impulses, but when placed in circumstances where he can run wild, he gets even crazier. He was one of the mutants that became fixated on feasting on human skin and was portrayed as a demon that came to take Marge's favorite child, only letting up if Homer performed a task for him. Finally, we've reached the dark side. These characters are the bad and the evil. Kang and Kodos have changed a lot since their introduction. In the first Halloween special, they didn't do anything vile. Alright, so they abducted the Simpsons, but under the impression that the family would want to be celebrated on their home planet. They never make it clear why they wish to honor that family exactly, but they were quickly insulted when Lisa accused the aliens of wanting to eat them. Now, their following appearances were much different, mocking humanity for their weaknesses, attempting to enslave the Earth, and even running for president. Kang was even shown to be Maggie's real father, with Marge having been abducted and inseminated. Principal Skinner loses a lot of points for being the mastermind behind one of the most gruesome treehouse stories, the murder and cannibalism of children. Skinner is given some other questionable roles, but this one was by far the worst. He stooped to using the children as a means of dealing with the school's low budget and trying to provide better meals for not only the students but the faculty. The devouring of human meat wound up turning them all into deranged cannibals that were only concerned with getting their next victim cornered. Also, Skinner took an axe to Willie when the groundskeeper tried saving Bart, Lisa, and Milhouse. While Snake wasn't super popular, he was consistent enough to mention on this list. Being a hardened criminal, it isn't so unexpected to see him take out more than a few people. 
One story that stuck out, however, was when he was sentenced to death for a third strike and came back to take down the witnesses, Mo, Apu, and Bart. He was able to carry out his wishes beyond the grave, using the hair that was once his to control Homer, and his murders were gruesome and merciless, using a corkscrew to remove Mo's heart straight from his chest, drowning Apu in the squishy machine, I know you are, but what am I? And for Bart, sealing the boy up in his room and and having him see his own father take a sledgehammer to him, and the fact that his hair tried to keep going after being removed was pretty disturbing to say the least. Now that's what I call a bad hair day. Smithers earns the silver medal of evil due to helping Mr. Burns. He collects dead bodies knowing full well they aren't entirely dead. He helps suck the brains from school children. He helps lure victims to be devoured by Burns' army of the undead, and the list goes on and on. Ultimately, his worst trait is that he goes along with whatever Mr. Burns cooks up, just wanting nothing more than to make the man happy. We were greeted with more than a few disturbing moments during these stories, such as seeing a snake version of Smithers unhinge his jaw to devour a now dead Mr. Burns so they could always be together. He's obsessive and loyal, but that was creepy for a number of reasons. Mr. Burns is just as sadistic in the Halloween universes as he is in the original storyline. He hunts people for sport. He preys on school children. He's a vampire that lures people to his home so he can feed on them. He steals Homer's body, even though the man isn't dead, to have a brain for his robot. Bed cook. A bed cook. He cuts off all cable and beer supply to his home, even though there was a trend of people going insane and murdering their families. No beer make Homer something something. He shares a body with Homer without any consent, figuring the man had plenty of room for both their heads, so why did it matter? He was a ruthless leader, hoarding the town's water supply and making them all kill one another to get any of it. He's already not an upstanding citizen, but he's made worse when it comes to the spookiest time of the year. <laughs> Scaredy cat. Yeah. We all may disagree on which adult animated show is truly the best, but say what you want about The Simpsons, the Treehouse of Horror Halloween specials are some of the best holiday cartoon specials of all time. Now, we've recently covered Treehouse of Horror in our Good to Evil series, but there's still one question to answer. After all these years, what stories from the Treehouse top the list as the most horrible, bloody, and traumatic? I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and these are the top five most gruesome Treehouse of Horror stories. Number five. Eating Children Springfield Elementary is not known for being the best school in the district. It's a running gag that they are one of the worst, with low test scores, poor attendance, poor equipment, and a bunch of other issues. One Halloween story in particular had a fun way to demonstrate how sometimes the staff had to be creative with budget cuts. It was Skinner that wound up having the idea to cook the children in order to not only cover costs, but to have a way to permanently deal with the troublemaking kids. You should have thought of that before you made that paper airplane. This is a story that sticks with audiences young and old since cannibalism is a very dark concept to contemplate. There have been instances of cannibalism where survival was slim in harsh environments, but also instances of people who simply wanted to indulge in human flesh for pleasure. This is made even more frightening when we see that this act was carried out by people the children should have been able to trust. The act of eating kids turned the staff into hungry and remorseless monsters that did little else except plan their next kill. To check on the free range children. And even worse, the parents and other residents of the town didn't even seem to notice. It was the kids that figured out what was happening. Watching this episode as a kid was actually pretty unsettling. Like other Treehouse of Horror plots, this was non-canon and was even written off as being a dream in the short. But waking up to be turned inside out due to a dangerous fog wasn't the best situation to be in either. We can wager that no one misses seeing the Simpsons family screaming in agony as their insides become their outsides. And the cherry on top, seeing Bart scream out as the dog tried feasting on him. There's no doubt that this whole special 
special created a morbid standard to how future specials would go, with the gore factor being turned up in following specials. Number 4. Willy Krueger Willy is normally a hero, or at least a tempted hero, in many of the treehouse of horror stories he's shown in. He tried saving kids from cannibalistic teachers, tried helping Homer get back to his timeline, and even helped Bart with his shinning, as Willy called it. You've got the shinning! You mean shining. But in this short story, he was driven by revenge against the parents he thought were responsible for his demise. And all because Homer couldn't understand the note the groundskeeper left in the hall. Do not touch Willy. Good advice. It isn't just that Willie is a villain that gives this episode a spot on the list, but more what he causes. Seeing Martin scream in terror, unable to ask for help as he dies, was a mortifying moment. Freddy Krueger movies always had a good bit of comedy to them, but the actual idea of someone killing you as you sleep is still a very scary thought to have. It's an incredibly vulnerable moment and one that you can't escape. And seeing these beloved characters that are normally indestructible actually be defeated like this is unsettling. Goodbye, Bart. Goodbye, Lise. After all, even in the Halloween shorts, a death is normally accompanied by a joke or something else to lighten the mood. But in this episode, like many others on the list, we're just left with feeling the same suspense and fear that the characters on screen do, being faced with the fact that any of them could die once faced with the angry groundskeeper. Plus, we also want to mention that Willy can be a force of nature even in the canon episodes. The guy wrestles with wolves and is known for having a bad temper. So pair that with having supernatural abilities and the determination to take out a class of children, and you have one scary guy. Number 3. Organ Collecting Frankenstein Professor Frank is one of those characters we don't get to see much development on. The Treehouse of Horror series seems to be where he shows up the most, giving input on fearful and mass panic producing situations. But one story in particular revealed not only more of his own backstory, but his father's. We learn that Frank kept his father frozen, hoping to be able to help the man he idolized after he was attacked by a shark. This would backfire, with his father not liking having a large part of his body replaced with machinery. So what am I, some kind of a tin can man from Planet Tomorrow? While Frank's ability to bring back his father was admired by the scientific community, John Frank Sr. went on to replace his missing organs by literally ripping them out of the residence of Springfield. In his pursuit to be more human, he wound up turning himself into a monster. When Frank was being given the Nobel Prize, his father went on a crazed rampage, ripping the brain out of every scientist in attendance. This is more violent than the hip hop awards. We have to place this on the list since it was not only horrible seeing the victims suffer as John ripped out their spines and hearts, but seeing Frank having to take out the man he once idolized and seeing a bunch of scientists' skulls being twisted open for their brains was a disturbing image. Number 2. Long Neck Bart When Homer is stuck with a curse from a gypsy, the members of the Simpsons family are cursed with various inconveniences. You will bring bad luck to everyone you love. Marge gets a full body of thick hair, Lisa slowly becomes more of a horse, and Maggie becomes a buck. The one that stood out during this tale was how Bart suffered with a horribly stretched out neck. This by itself may not sound scary, but we placed this moment on our list since this did wind up leading to Bart's death. Even after Homer went through all the trouble of trying to right everything by catching a leprechaun, Bart is known as a very resilient character. Even in the Treehouse of Horror episodes, he's always bouncing back and rolling with the punches of whatever is happening, even becoming a hero in many cases. He's saved his sister more than a few times in these features and has gone through being part fly, being part vampire, and gaining stretching powers. But this death stands out because, one, we don't often see Bart die in these specials since he's one of the main cast, there have been times where he's almost passed and come back, and times where he's technically undead, but rarely do we ever see him simply die, and two, because his last words were, can't live this way anymore, before he collapses and drowns in a bowl of cereal. I can't live this way anymore. We're then left with the disturbing scene of seeing the leprechaun make light of the boy's death by dancing on his head as he's suffocated, and Bart doesn't even try to fight him off because he's just giving up on living. His father Homer just being unhappy his son doesn't have the fight in him to help lift the curse. 
There isn't much that's scarier than that, and it gave the Simpsons family a level of realism we don't see a lot of in the Treehouse of Horror series. Number 1. Goldilocks This will likely surprise some of you, but we're gonna place the death of Goldilocks first. In the special where Bart and Lisa take the roles of Hansel and Gretel, they encounter a few other stories before coming across the witch. She seems nice. I'm gonna go with my gut and trust her. One of these was the well-known tale of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Only in this version, Version, not only were the bears closer to being wild animals than in most adaptations, but Goldilocks never made it out of the home. When Bart and Lisa are fleeing, they keep the door leading out secure with a chair in place under the knob. They unknowingly sealed the poor girl inside to face the bears in their wrath, and we the audience are left with the image of a terror-induced young girl and hearing her final cries for help as she's ripped to shreds. The fact that we're left to imagine how she was torn apart, coupled with hearing her death rattles, made the scene all the more horrific. You'll pay for this with your children's blood! All right, how are you gonna get them? Skeleton power? The Simpsons is one of the longest-running shows in television history. That makes their annual Halloween episodes one of our longest-running spooky traditions. They're violent enough to give Itchy and Scratchy a run for their money and still filled with the biting humor of our favorite cartoon family. These are the episodes that we just can't wait to sink our teeth into every year at around this time. Hi, I'm Caleb with Wicked Binge, and today we'll be ranking the Treehouse of Horror episodes from tame to terrifying. Just a couple of rules before we hop into the main Mayhem. We'll be looking at just how scary each episode is. That means we're taking into consideration each of the three stories in each of the 31 Treehouse of Horror specials. Horror is subjective, so in addition to how scary our writers found each episode, we'll also have a couple secondary considerations to help us make those tough calls. Those will include how creative the episode was, the scare to laugh ratio, and in a few cases, the source material for parodies. Taking this spot for the tamest place to start your marathon is Treehouse of Horror 19. Don't get us wrong, there are fun times to be had in this anthology. We love the random Mad Men parody that eases us right into the middle segment, How to Get Ahead in Dudvertising. It also made us question how our morals might change in a world of sentient pumpkins and talking turkeys. Revenge! But in terms of scares, this one left us wanting. We love the grand pumpkin, but taking him down with the power of imagination was more whimsical than spooky. It's also a topic we've seen covered in other Treehouse tales before. Then we have Treehouse of War 12. This episode has not aged well as some of our others on the list. Aside from some outdated language and offensive stereotyping though, we just didn't feel like the opening segment Hex in the City offered much in the way of fear. The middle segment wasn't bad, but the killer house is something that we've seen done in the show already and with greater impact. The final segment seems safe, right? Because when have we ever seen anything related to Harry Potter age poorly? But to be serious for a moment, the Simpsons take on the Wizarding World was more fun than scary. And thankfully, it was written before we knew anything about the Hogwarts plumbing. Ugh. Up next is Treehouse of Horror 27. This one got our hopes up with a promising parody setup. For the tale of Dry Hard, Mr. Burns hoards all the water during the world's most serious drought. They lean into the Hunger Games style premise of making children fight to the death only to pick on the least interesting elements of the franchise. There was an interesting middle story about Lisa's imagination, but again, it's something we feel has been played out over the last few decades on the show. Though it was executed to a more terrifying effect than in 19 where we had a similar complaint. Mo Finger was an uninspired spy story that was more action than slasher. It was a fun episode with some promise, but it's not inspiring any nightmares this time around. Following that is Treehouse of Horror 29. The sad thing about this story is that they dug deep into some classic horror roots and there was a lot of potential with all three tales. They cover pod people, Lisa finally snaps at Bart's antics, and genetic experiments go horribly wrong in the final offering of Geriatric Park. Unfortunately, not a single one of these tales sticks its landing. There are some half-hearted attempts at feel-good messages, and that's just not the spirit of this holiday, or the treehouse for that matter. Moving on is actually the following year's episode, Treehouse of Horror 30. We're not gonna lie, this one is a ton of fun. It had some of the timeliest references of any Treehouse of Horror. The opening segment, Danger Things, covers Stranger Things for a surprisingly excellent fit. Who knew that the show many of us have been watching since the 80s would pair so well with the 80s nostalgia? Unfortunately, if you weren't scared by Stranger Things, you definitely won't be scared by the watered-down take on monsters. We could virtually say the same thing about the final segment when Harry met Slimy. 
It was a very humorous take on the shape of water, but it focused strongly on the romance portion, not the few spooks that were to be had. An excellent episode, and we highly recommend it, but it is more for the faint of heart. Up next is the Treehouse of Horror 23. In all fairness to this installation, we actually believe that the opening segment, the greatest story ever hold, is one of the most frightening premises in Treehouse of Horror. The black hole is looking a lot bigger. Black holes are powerful, unknowable, and we like that the show tapped into the terror behind the real scientific principle. The other two segments dragged it a bit lower on the list. There was unnormal activity which perfectly captured the slow pace of the source material. It may work well for slow burn horror fans, but it doesn't translate as well to middle segment cartoon territory. There was also Barton Homer's excellent adventure, which runs amok into romance territory yet again. Highly worth watching, but there is scarier yet to come. Speaking of which, let's now talk about Trails of Horror 25. There were a couple of hits and a miss in this one. The astute fan has probably noticed the writer's fascination with a clockwork orange. Bart dresses as Alex DeLarge in one of the earliest treehouses, and we Viddy Mackie do the same a couple times after that. All real horror show. The middle segment, A Clockwork Yellow, finally does a proper parody of it. Unfortunately, it falls flat in the scares now that it's finally here. Fans of the film, or book for that matter, will have plenty to appreciate, but the terrors of the social commentary are all but entirely lost to the segment. School as Hell is your standard violent Simpsons special, psychological torment, pain plus the a little heartwarming and a lot disturbing. The ending segment, The Others, is the one that we wanted to talk about in particular. The Simpsons are haunted by the Simpsons from the Tracy Ullman show. While the execution of the plot and Homer's personality shift in general left something to be desired, it was a fascinating meta callback that we couldn't help but appreciate. The idea of Simpsons reincarnations also tapped into a very specific sort of existential dread summoned by the idea of such a staple of a show being changed. Up next is Treehouse of Horror 17. This one is weird. The opening segment, Married to the Blob, sees Homer become a ravenous cannibal. That was scary, but not as scary as the strange note it ended on about eating homeless people. The closing segment, The Day the Earth Looked Stupid, was a very clever piece centered around the War of the Worlds. Absolutely genius. The middle segment was about Crossy the Clown's Jewish golem coming to life and taking orders from Bart. So, uh, make of that what you will. We will, in the meantime, move to our next pick, Treehouse of Horror 24. This one had one of the most creative introductions. Instead of a spooky skit or straightforward warning, they redid the entire Simpsons introduction as reimagined by Guillermo del Toro. We feel like the first segment, Oh, the Places You'll Do, may have missed the mark. Have the creators of The Simpsons learned nothing from the early thousands wave of horror? More violent doesn't always mean scarier. In this over-the-top Cat in the Hat parody, Homer the Fat in the Hat abducts his children to sow chaos around the town. The children, understandably, grow afraid of him and end up killing him so they can wait for their mother at home. It was too violent to emulate the source material, but too whimsical to be scary. All in all, we're not too sure what they were going for with this one. Despite that opening misstep, however, we feel it's a solid treehouse entry. The middle segment pits Bart against Lisa as the two are forced to share one body, each trying to remove the other's head. I'm gonna make sure you stay asleep. A silly cartoon premise, yes, but it did get into the Halloween spirit. The conclusion, Freaks No Geeks, served as a callback to our long-beloved horror classic, Freaks. Even with the weird How I Met Your Mother joke as a final shot, we feel like this tale was scary enough to take the hit. Following that is Treehouse of Horror 18. Once again, they have chosen to parry some non-horror content. That never leads to the scariest tales. Both the opening and middle sections were automatically less frightening because they chose to parody E.T. and Mr. and Mrs. Smith respectfully. That being said, we were impressed by Heck House. Sure, it played off the long-standing Treehouse of Horror joke where sweet, good-natured neighbor Reno Ned Flanders turns out to be the devil. But we thought the setup to this one was particularly clever in comparison to some of the others. After that, we have Treehouse of Horror 26. The middle entry from this was Homerzilla. While not the scariest of the Treehouse tales, it was long overdue considering how long it had been since they took their crack at King Kong. Likewise, there was nothing too remarkable about the closing entry, Telepaths of Glory. It was decent, but not overly frightening. What was frightening about this one, you ask? Well, we saved the best for last, and we'll cycle back around now to discuss the opening entry, Wanted Dead, Then Alive. The first tale of terror from this anthology kicks off with Sideshow Bob successfully killing Bart. 
Nice try. Even though the audience knows better than to treat the Treehouse of Horror as canon 26 years in, there is something deeply unsettling about seeing the villain succeed after so long. And with murdering a child, no less. There are even big name horror franchises that are even too scared to kill off the little children for fear that they will go too far. To have that start the tale was scary enough. What makes it far, far worse is the invention of Sideshow Bobs that allows him to bring Bart back from the dead. Then he can kill him over and over and over and over again. For that premise alone, we think it deserves its ranking. Following behind is one of the most iconic installments in Treehouse of Horror 7. Everyone remembers when Lisa accidentally creates a small civilization of people. Everyone in this case also encompasses South Park fans. The series had an episode paying homage to The Simpsons with this idea featured as a prominent plot point. What you might not remember is that it was only the middle section of the Treehouse of Horror anthology. We think the idea could have easily sustained a longer episode, but perhaps it was just too outlandish to fit anywhere else. The opening section, The Thing and I, was some over-the-top Halloween fun. We learned in this episode that Bart had a conjoined twin at birth who had been chained in the attic all these years. The episode also ends on Citizen Kang, which provides some excellent social commentary. All in all, this episode had a little bit of everything, and we loved it. Next up is a personal favorite, Treehouse of Horror 10. We couldn't justify putting this any higher on a scary scale, but it was a truly hilarious episode. It starts off with I Know What You Diddly Italy Did, which was a fun take on I Know What You Did Last Summer. Only this version involves fog jogging and a Flanders werewolf, so obviously it's the more entertaining story. It also features desperately zeking Xena, where Lucy Lawless, voiced by the legend herself, is captured by the collector. I told you I'm not Xena. I'm Lucy Lawless. He plans to turn her into his bride after killing Bart and Lisa, who have been exposed to radiation and developed superpowers. Not the most horrific premise, unless you want to draw the Annie Wills comparison with a deep-rooted commentary about toxic nature of fandoms. But even we think that might be a bit of a stretch. The episode ends on Life's a Glitch, Then You Die, which sees the Simpsons separated and the world end. It may not have been done in the scariest fashion, but it was a fittingly bleak end to the special. If you're looking for lighter but more violent scares, our next entry has you covered. Treehouse of Horror 9. This was released early in the Halloween special days and it shows. All the ideas seem fresh and fun, finding a good balance of scary and hilarity. It opens with Hell to Pay, where Homer's hair transplants makes him murderous. The middle segment for us is what really seals the show, however. Remember in our intro how we said the violence in these episodes could give Itchy and Scratchy a run for their money? Well, in this episode, we get to see the beloved cat and mouse get in on some of the murders. It ends with the sophisticated starship poopers. We're kidding. While it might not be the most intellectual premise ever featured in one of these anthologies, it was well executed and played off the real fear of having horrible secrets in one's own home. I was hoping this day would never come. We move on to Treehouse of Horror 16. Now this is what we call a solid entry. While there was no standout tales from the set of three, there were also no blunders. The ideas themselves may not have been awe-inspiring, but all three were well executed and entertaining. It starts with Bart Official Intelligence, where Bart struggles with a reality in which his parents love his robotic replacement brother more than him. It moves to the survival of the fattest, which sees Mr. Burns hunting humans on a private island. It ends with the classically titled, I've grown a costume on your face. A misunderstanding with a witch results in everyone being turned into their costumes. The scariest episode? No. But this one comes with a hefty helping of spooks and consists almost entirely of Halloween fun. Following in its footsteps is Treehouse of Horror 14. Now, this one had some very clever ideas. It really is a shame that the anthology setup gives us so little time to enjoy some of these worlds. All three of these concepts would have benefited from the full 20 minutes to themselves. In Reaper Madness, we see Homer get to take up the mantle of death. In Frankenstein, we learn about Springfield's smartest inventor and the complicated relationship he had with his father. Of course, these insights are had while his reanimated father is looking for more brains to eat. And in Stop the World, I Want to Goof Off, we are treated to the ramifications of children who have been given too much power. Three fun tales with sinister undertones and a solid pick for your next marathon. Now on to another one of our favorites, Trials of Horror 8. This one just starts on a great note. Although the openings of the anthology aren't technically what we're looking at, it's worth mentioning that this one is very clever. We see the sensor at Fox being stabbed repeatedly by the TV rating, which is going up and up before finally landing on 666. 
a very ominous beginning to one of the scariest episodes. The home Mega Man sees Springfield dealing with mutants. Their design? Spectacularly frightening, especially for a primetime cartoon. Seriously, there are live action zombies who could take some lessons from this. Fly vs. Fly is, as you may have guessed, a twist on the classic Cronenberg film. Though it doesn't have the same level of gore, there were plenty of enough emotional twists to keep us at the edge of our seat. The anthology concludes with Easy Bake Coven. It serves as a fun, almost educational insight into what the spirit of Halloween truly consists of. Bribing witches with candy so they don't eat your children. Now for a cursed number, Treehouse of Horror 13. You knew they had to step up their game for the unlucky 13th installation of Treehouse, didn't you? Even in the opening, they're trying to bring Maud back from the dead. While fans of Futurama have seen what can happen when a self-involved, beer-loving character gets cloned, the exploration of the concept actually started right here on The Simpsons. The fright to creep and scare harms is possibly one of the most horrifyingly convoluted titles ever to be featured in this series, but it is also our pick for the best segment from this episode. It got real with its political commentary, but that's nothing new to The Simpsons. This poignant piece about gun control brought a bit of levity and a healthy dose of real dread to the table. If there was a weak entry, it would be the island of Dr. Hibbard. The episode ends on what starts as a parody and ends as sort of a creepy animal-human hybrid paradise. If you want any more elaboration than that, you'll have to watch it for yourselves. We, however, will be enjoying our next slot, Treehouse of Horror 3. About time some of these classic episodes show up, huh? A Clown Without Pity wraps a lot of parodies and references into one small package with a killer crusty doll. King Homer was the aforementioned King Kong parody. Hey, we finally got there! In terms of parodies, this one was probably the most straightforward. Not a lot of extra stuff was mixed in or really changed, but it was a cute segment nonetheless. Our favorite selection was the third and final tale. Dial Z for Zombie was an excellent piece of cartoon macabre. It's a well-placed and loving nod to the return of the living dead that really captured both the camp and tension of the original. Of course, it is much tamer than the horror movie, but for a family-friendly version, they got pretty intense. Our next section is Treehouse of Horror 11. Bear with us, because we think the horror is more subtle in this one. While most of our terrifying selections up to this point have been pretty in your face, there were just a lot of unsettling elements in this one that added up. In G -G -G Ghost D Dad, it was the foretelling of Homer's death. Though a large part of the story takes place after Homer has already died, the idea that he knows it's going to happen leading up to the actual event, plus the bleak ending, has very sinister undertones. In Scary Tales Can Come True, there's a similar sense of unease. The prophetic nature of the Grimm's fairy tale collection that Lisa's reading is spooky on its own. I mean, have you read some of those things? But the fact she can barely read it as quickly as Bart stumbles into fairy tale hijinks builds a surprising amount of tension for the two. Night of the Dolphin may have been the weakest link. In trying to parry the birds with dolphins, the entire premise seemed all the more cartoonish and silly. That being said, it was not entirely devoid of creepy messaging either. In this case, the morals seem to be that sometimes caring can in fact make things worse. Very bleak. Very fitting for an early edition of Treehouse. Up next is Treehouse of Horror 31. People say that The Simpsons has lost its touch, but their 31st Halloween special has climbed up pretty high on our list. It falls just short of top 10 material for those of you who aren't keeping track of our place. It's also worth mentioning that this is the 666th episode of The Simpsons, and how cool is that? What we like about this episode has actually been a complaint in the others. Most of their references were not strictly horror-based. Where this episode succeeded was that it did highlight the scariest parts of the source material successfully. The perfect example of this comes from the first tale, Toy Gory. It follows the same premise of the beloved children's movie Toy Story, but it really lingers on the pain of the toys that are subjected to Bart's rough style of play and what it would be like should they choose to seek revenge. A chilling thought, to be sure. Into the Homerverse talks about the instability of any multiverse occurrences. This isn't as outwardly frightening, but it does put a darker spin on the original Spider-Man concept being tackled. And B9 Rewind has one of the most terrifying things, death loops. Back at the same beginning? We talked about this in an earlier entry where Bart was being killed multiple times over and over. That was scary and weirdly intimate since he was being personally murdered by his arch nemesis repeatedly. Where we feel this version has the edge is that Lisa and her unlikely comrade Nelson remember that they're dying repeatedly. If there's anything worse than dying multiple times, it's carrying the memory of all those deaths with you. 
there are some similar scares in the following entry, Treehouse of Horror 21. While again, the source material isn't the scariest, we love how hard The Simpsons doubled down on some of these concepts. In the opening tale, War and Pieces, we see a board game entitled Satan's Path bring all the other games to life. It's harder to wrap one's head around than Jumanji and, if you can believe it, all the bloodier. Master and Cadaver was relatively tame in comparison. It was a down-to-earth middle section that capitalized on human basic fears of strangers and regret. And who could have forgot about Tweenlight? Anyone who wasn't afraid of the sparkly vampires in Twilight should take a look at this. We think that they're actually much scarier when they're eight, dorky, and more aggressive than their original counterparts. We don't know what's scarier, having to be an eight-year-old forever, or having your vampire boyfriend not understand that you don't want to be an eight-year-old forever. Moving on, we arrive at Treehouse of Horror 20. This was not a kind year to Lisa Simpson. In the opening sketch, dial M for murder or press pound to return to the main menu, Bart tricks then blackmails her into killing his fourth grade teacher. Eventually, she snaps and turns on her brother instead. In the second, we get a very personal fear of hers. Not only are the people eating meat, which bothers her as a vegetarian, they are eating meat-fed meat. That is rightly called an abomination. It also leads to a highly contagious strain of virus that nearly ends the world. In that sense, it really wasn't a good time for anyone. And in the third slot of the show, we have There's No Business Like Mo Business. While the plot threats to Sweeney Todd may have been a stretch, we do really admire The Simpsons' commitment to the vibe of a stage production. There are curtains, there are breaks, and of course, there's plenty of bloody singing to keep us entertained. It brought a fresh idea to the show and got everyone out of their comfort zones. Next up is Treehouse of Horror 22. The really shocking thing is that Treehouse of Horror made it 21 episodes before they thought to capitalize on the very popular fear of spiders. This episode creeps into our top 10 for being utterly cruel to arachnophobes everywhere. The opening tale, The Diving Bell and the Butterball, sees Homer being paralyzed by a Black Widow spider. Scary stuff, especially with the close-ups of the spider. The worst part is that when he is eventually given powers by the radioactive spider, we first see it crawling all over him while paralyzed. This includes going in and out of his eye sockets, all eight of those legs skittering out from under the lids before biting him again. This seriously might be the scariest animation segment in any of the 31 episodes we're discussing today. The second tale is more of an existential fright. In Dial D for Diddly, we see an unusual Dexter parody starring Ned Flanders. He's being manipulated into killing people by Homer who is pretending to be God. For any Dexter fans out there, you may agree that this is a weirdly accurate casting. That aside, it taps into something a little deeper. The things that comfort us, like religion, can sometimes also be used by the unworthy to manipulate us. It's some food for thought. But luckily, there is a lighter note to end on, and that's the only thing keeping this from being higher on the list. In the Navi is a pretty straightforward Avatar parody. Although it does get weird when Bart fathers a bunch of alien babies and potentially picks up a space STD from Millhouse. I have space warts, and I got them from Millhouse. But we're choosing not to dwell on that, and we'll be moving on. Here we have Treehouse of Horror 15. In case you didn't get enough Ned Flanders in our last entry, the first hail in this episode is The Ned Zone. It's actually a bit strange that with over 30 years of horror parodies, there have only been a small handful of Stephen King selections. Here we see Ned struggle with a difficult moral decision after he is gifted the power to see the future. He has to decide whether or not he has it in him to kill his best friend Homer Simpson if it means saving the rest of Springfield. Of course, we know it's never quite that simple. Four beheadings and a funeral was the tamest entry of these three. It follows Detective Lisa as she investigates a serial killer in London. Though this was played for less more than the other two accompanying stories, there is plenty of murder and tension to go around. The final tale was the scariest. In the belly of the boss doesn't seem so bad on the surface. The Simpsons need to be shrunken down to rescue a shrunken Maggie from inside Mr. Burns. Those of you who have been watching our gruesome videos knows that this premise is almost always disgusting, even in animation. But it does not stop the family from going in to rescue their youngest. Unfortunately, Homer doesn't make it out on time. Rather than ending in the far more plausible scenario where Homer explodes out of Mr. Burns, his boss survives the ordeal with a Homer-sized man living just under his skin. It was probably one of the most effective pieces of body horror ever featured on the show. It was also enough to single-handedly bring this one close to the top of our terrifying spectrum. But scarier still is Treehouse of Horror 6. 
Back in the early days of Treehouse of Horror anthologies, we just had to respect the writer's commitment to horror content. We have one campy, classic style segment with Attack of the 50 Foot Eyesores. This is followed by a more serious installation, Nightmare on Evergreen Terrace, which actually does a decent job of bringing a legal to use Kruger character out of the skin of Groundskeeper Willie. And then we end on a bit of a physics based and existential dread where a 2D family experiences the third dimension for the first time. Sure, it's funny, but would you, as a 3D person, think it was as funny if you were suddenly thrust into the fourth dimension? We doubt it. Unless there were erotic cakes somehow involved. Up next is Treehouse of Horror 5. Here comes our other King parody. The Shining is one of the most iconic Simpsons bits. It's legally ambiguous, it's hilarious, and it does justice to its source material with the bloody elevators, hedge maze, and deranged father. This also has the added horror of Mr. Burns playing haphazardly with the lives of the people he employs. Time and Punishment deals with the horrific idea of time travel and how to navigate it. While simple enough of a premise, they did a great job conveying their point alongside Homer's panic at his predicament. And Nightmare Cafeteria is some classic good cannibalism terror. It just keeps putting the pressure on until it's finally, finally revealed that it's all a nightmare Bart is having. In a surprising twist, and that is more terrifying than comedic, the real danger turns out to be a fog that turns people inside out. We get to see this horror firsthand before the very organ exposed family ends the episode on a musical number. We won't be forgetting this one anytime soon. We move now on to the Treehouse of Horror 4. We had spoken earlier about the idea of Ned Flanders as the devil had lost its shock factor. Well, there was a time where it hadn't. That time was Season 5, Episode 5 of The Simpsons, where Ned revealed himself to be the Lord of Darkness in the opening tale The Devil and Homer Simpson. It's always the ones you least expect. This was a clever and fun twist that became a staple for the Treehouse gags for years to come. Not to mention, he is pretty terrifying as Satan. It makes his cheerful demeanor feel like a facade, and I, for one, have not seen him the same way since this episode aired. The middle section was also phenomenal. Terror at five and a half feet builds excellent tension, even through use of cartoonish antics. There's a real sense of isolation even on a crowded bus when no one believes Bart Simpson about the gremlin that is trying to kill them all. It all wraps up with the classic Bart Simpson's Dracula. While not the scariest classic tackled in Treehouse, it was a solid end to a very solid collection of terrors. Just behind this is Treehouse of Horror 28, another modern one creeps into the top five. We only have a few episodes left to go at this point, and you may be surprised to find one from the 29th season of The Simpsons. But we feel like this one was genuinely pretty scary, especially for the kiddos. It starts with the excerpt Sis, where we see Maggie infected with Pazuzu. This call back to the Treehouse tradition of tackling classic horror movies was just what the special needed to kick off the celebration on the right note. It moves into Coralisa, which is one of my personal favorites. Though Coraline the movie was not nearly as scary as Coraline the book, the show does a great job showcasing the creepiest moments. With the elongated features and button eyes, the other family still isn't as scary as living with the Simpsons. What we loved most about this episode was the callback to the early days of Treehouse anthologies where Marge interrupts the show to give a warning about how graphic the final tale is. What you're about to see is so disgusting. And sure enough, that tale is called Mmm Homer. And it's about Homer Simpson eating himself. It's disturbing, it's absurd, and it really is a well done horror premise. Making it all the way to the penultimate spot and sadly no further is Treehouse of Horror. The original came so, so close to being our number one pick. And honestly, we try to push it over that line because we're a little biased. But seriously, this is my personal favorite Treehouse of Horror. Not only did it establish this amazing tradition for Halloween fans and Simpson fans that come together on an annual basis, but it was well done. It set the groundwork for three scary tales being told, and it told its selections well. Like all of our following favorites, it had a good balance. There was one tale, Bad Dreamhouse, that was scary in an existential way. There was one comedic tale, Hungry Are the Damned, that relied on misunderstandings while ending on a bleaker note, and there was one classic retelling, which was in this instance, The Raven. And let me just nerd out for a moment, because The Simpsons retelling of The Raven is one of my all-time favorite things in the world. Lisa takes the poem very seriously and reads it in a somber tone indicative of how the poem is usually read. Bart has perfectly timed interruptions in his fits of boredom that lead to priceless commentary on the evolution of horror as it pertains to the decreasing attention span of audiences. As we get into the scene proper, something truly beautiful happens that any Poe fan has to love. 
Homer's shouting at the lines while not traditionally how the tale is told brings a new life to the frustration of the narrator. Take thy beak from out thy heart and get thy form from off thy door. Absolute timeless genius that becomes more relevant every year. This was my favorite tale from my favorite tree of horror, and while I'm thrilled I got to go on my tangent, we still do have one scare selection for you. The winner of the most terrifying episode is Treehouse of Horror 2. When March comes out on stage and says this year is going to be worse than the year before, she really wasn't lying. This season 3 offering, the second ever Treehouse of Horror, really was the scariest of them all. It opens with a parody of a classic, which was in this case, The Monkey's Paw. What was so exceptional about this, over other adaptations of the story, is that the horror was twofold. There were the terrible consequences that seemed to occur whenever The Simpsons used the paw to make a wish, the standard terror of the story, but there was also horror that came from regret. Since you couldn't see the terrible consequences from outside the wish bubble and the paw gets passed along, The Simpsons get to see all the benefits that happen once someone else has it. It was an elegant addition to the original that was more fitting for the tone of the show. The second tale was also something to behold. In a Twilight Zone style story, Bart has unlimited powers over the entire world. That's terrifying enough on its own, and we're not sure that we need to elaborate much. Everyone walks on eggshells, the world ceases to function, and his monstrous creations roam free while he is praised for making them. One of the scariest elements of this was the realism that was sometimes and surprisingly applied with little warning. An example of this is how Krusty the Clown is no longer allowed to sleep and the toll that it's taken on him physically. If we had one complaint, it would be that the episode ends with its comedic entry into the anthology, though on second thought maybe it needed a lighter tone after all the scares it had already given us. 